The website for OpenAI has some pretty cool generative art. And the other day when they launched their iOS app, I saw this moving circles in a wave sort of pattern going on and thought that I had to recreate this in P5.js. So let's have a look at how to do this. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, so our strategy with this one is gonna to be to first draw a row of circles that are all evenly spaced. Once we figured that out, we're gonna find a function that lets us have a decreasing space as we approach the center, and then an increasing space as we approach the other edge of the screen. And then lastly, we'll draw columns and then animate the whole thing. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I can use a loop to draw a bunch of circles in a row. So to do that, I'm gonna use a while loop here and I'm gonna declare a value called i and set it equal to zero. And then we'll say while i is less than width, which in this case is gonna be 400 because we've hard coded our width up here in the create canvas function. I'll open and close curly braces. And the very first thing I wanna do is say i++. If you do this, you might crash your program, or sorry, if you don't do this, um, because then you'll get stuck in an infinite loop. And so then right before that, we want to draw our ellipse with an X coordinate of I. And next uh, parameter here is the Y coordinate. We'll pass height divided by two. That's gonna draw it in the middle of the canvas. And then we'll pass a size here and we'll pass 20. So now that we draw and it's also drawing over and over again, which is why we're seeing kind of this, really the stroke get passed here. And it's also drawing every just zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can do two things. First, we'll say no loop, and that's gonna stop our draw function from being called more than once. And then we wanna actually iterate i by the size of the circle. So we'll pass 20 here. Now, anytime we're reusing a hard-coded value, I'd rather store that in a constant variable, and we'll call this circle size, and we'll set that equal to 20 up here. And then I'll just copy that, and I'll paste it here, and I'll paste it here. And now if I play, we get the same thing, and it's not drawing over and over again. All right, so the next thing to tackle is getting that spacing. And I kind of want the first spacing to be about the size of a circle. And then of course the next spacing would have to be a little bit less and then less and less, less and less. As we get to the middle, there would be zero spacing between each circle and then out on the outside here. Uh, when I'm thinking about this, I think, okay, what sort of function gives me a value between uh, really zero and one? Because I want to start at one and then go to zero and then I want to go back to one. And the first thing that popped into my head was the cosine function. Now the cosine function actually modulates between one and negative one, you can see here, let me zoom in on Google. Uh, I'll come over here. So we have our function modulating from a value of one down to a value of negative one at pi. Remember this is ninth grade stuff. So if you don't remember this, this is your little review. And then at two pi, we've completed a full cycle of the cosine function. Now what we want this to do is we want it to come down at to a y value of zero right here and then back up to one, um, at two pi. So we can actually use ChatGPT to modify the cosine function for us because heck, I don't remember how to do this. It's not that hard, but hey, it's fun. So let's use old ChatGPT to ask, how would you modify the cosine function so that it oscillates between a maximum value of one and a minimum value of zero? And he says, okay, we like we already know, the cosine function oscillates between negative one and one. Now we need to shift it upward by adding one. It oscillates between zero and two, and then you scale it by multiplying, or I was gonna say by multiplying by a half or dividing by two. So in this case, he gave us y equals cosine x plus one all divided by two. Now I'm gonna multiply this factor of a half so that I get cosine of x divided by two plus a half. And you can see if we graph that over here, so I have 0.5 times cosine of x plus 0.5, then we get this function that oscillates between a value of one down to zero at uh, x value of pi, and then back up to one at two pi. All right, math review is complete. Let's go back to the code. The other thing we need to do is that in our code, we're going from zero to width. And we need a way to interpolate our that value to a value between zero and two pi. So luckily P5 comes with this really cool and handy mat function. I'll declare a variable called uh, let lerp standing for interpolate width equal map. And we're gonna map the value of i from zero to width. Uh, and we want it to map to a value of zero to two times pi. And I know this is a little bit a little bit wonky, so let's go ahead and console log our lerp width. And let's see what that gets us. So I just hit play and let me bring up our console here. And we can see lerp width is going from zero to almost two pi here. Two pi would be basically six, so 5.9. Good enough for government work, right? So, okay, we've got our lerp width. Now we need to apply our cosine value to it. So let's say let, uh, what do we wanna call this? Let distance width equal to, what did we have? 0 0.5 times cosine of our x value, which in this case is lerp width. So let's go ahead and grab that. 
And this is all multiply, so let me put a star there. And then we need to add 0 0.5. And that gets us, so this is like basically any value between one and zero. If I wrap that in parentheses, now I know this is between one and zero. And I can also console log dist width just to prove that to myself. So let's go ahead and look in the logs here. And we see at a lerp width of zero, we get a dist width of one. And it, then it goes down to 0 0.97, 0 0.90. And it's going down, down, down all the way to zero uh, at a value of pi. And then back up almost to one at a value of 5.9. So this is working out great. The last thing we need to do is actually apply this to how we're drawing the circles. Uh, the other thing we want to do is multiply this by our circle size, right? Because this was between zero and one. So now we'll get a spacing between uh, circle size. It'll come back down to zero. It's basically scaling by a factor of circle size here. Uh, so I don't think I need to console log anymore. And then we have ellipse, i, height divided by two, and circle size. Now let's go ahead and update i right before we draw the ellipse. So I'm going to cut that and paste it up here. And we already want to add circle size, but let's now also add our dist width to that. And if I hit play, now I can see I've kind of got this cool spacing effect going on. It's a little bit off right now, but don't worry. Once we animate it and make some adjustments at the end, everything will look fine. Okay, so we've figured out how to do one row. Now we need to just add the columns. And so that's kind of, we're focusing on this value here. And anytime I'm thinking about a grid of anything, I'm thinking about nested loops. So we'll do the, pretty much the same thing, but we'll declare a variable called j, set that equal to zero, and we'll do a while loop inside of our width while loop. So while j is less than height. And again, we want to increment j. So let me actually pull this out and put it inside of our while loop. And I wanna make sure that we're incrementing j. So j plus equals circle size. But we also need to do a very similar calculation like we did with the width up here. So I'm going to change this to lerp height. And I'm going to map the value of j from 0 to height uh, to 0 to 2 pi, because that will be one phase. And then we'll say dist height equal to 0 0.5 times cosine of our lerp height, not lerp width. And times circle size is good there. j plus equals circle size. And then we need to add our dist height. And rather than drawing it at height divided by two, we can now draw it at j. And the very last thing we need to do is we need to reset j after this while loop executes. So we set j to zero out here. So let's reset it to zero um, outside of the loop. And just so we can see everything, I'll backspace there and play. And oh, height is not defined because I spelled it wrong. So where did I spell it wrong? Not here, but here. And now we get this grid of circles all within our canvas here. Now you can tell I need to offset it a little bit. I think um, kind of rather than setting i equal to zero, let's just set it to circle size times negative one for now. And we'll do the same with j. And oh, it's looking a little bit off because we set j back to zero here. So let's set that to circle size times negative one as well. And this is looking really good. It's not perfect, but again, we're gonna animate it, so it's gonna be just fine. Now, when I'm thinking about animating this thing, I know, I know that cosine is gonna return me, or this function here, really, is going to return me a value between zero and one. So I can kind of play with really anything that goes in the cosine. Um, and the thing I wanna play with is frame rate. So if I just add frame, not frame rate, frame count, this is, an, this is kind of a, um, a counter that increments every time the draw loop is called. So we're gonna add frame count and let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'm gonna have to remove this call to no loop up here and I'll hit play and we can see we're getting circles <laughs> animating like crazy. Um, they're jittering way too fast. So all we need to do is kind of divide frame count by some value. So let's say const speed multiplier equal, I don't know, we'll set it to 20. And then we'll just divide frame count by our speed multiplier. And you can see now we've got these circles all oscillating. Uh, so that was actually pretty easy to implement the animation here. Now, some things you probably want to do are I want to reduce the circle size to 10. And so now I'm getting even closer to that effect that we see on OpenAI's website. We'll set this to window width and window height so that it takes up our whole screen. And that's looking really good. The last thing to do would probably be to change the colors on this. So rather than drawing a gray background every time, I'll draw something kind of fancy dark purple. And then I'll set the fill so that our ellipses fill not with white, but this, this other purple color. 
And if I hit play, oh, the other thing I want to do is no stroke so that we don't see that black outline of the circle. So there you have it. That's done. I hope the video does it justice. It's playing really smoothly here. Um, you know, there may be a frame rate issue that's making it look a little less smooth, but I'll drop a clonable in the link below so you can go check it out there. And if you want to put it in Webflow, you should definitely check out my video on how to use P5 as a website background. That will really help you make these cool animated heroes and experiment with creative coding. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.